Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, I talked about how you can configure the NGAP between AMF and the G Node B over the SCTP. Now, let's move a step ahead and let's try to connect our UE with the G Node B and see how the control plane is working over the air interface. Now, keep in mind, UE Ransom is just a UE emulator. So it cannot actually transmit the packets over air. So we need to find a way where we can see this emulated packets as well in Wireshark. For this, there is a very good library which has been created by Lois Royer. Hats off to him. And I will just follow this installation so that you can see the RRC packets in Wireshark and you can troubleshoot it further. To do this, we need to first install this plugin inside Wireshark. So the steps are very simple, just follow along. First of all, I will clone this Git repository. So I will just go to the same directory. I have only UE run same folder here to a git clone and paste the URL. That's it, the directory would be cloned. Now I need to go to Wireshark and find the path of the plugins. So if you go to plugins, you can see this is the path user lib x8664 Linux uh, GNU Wireshark. So we will go to user lib x8664 Linux GNU Wireshark. And if you see, you will have plugins here. All right. And I've already installed it. So I will just show you, you need to use cp hyphen capital R. This will be recursively copying the path which we provide. This is UE RANSIM and RLS Wireshark Dissector. And you need to provide the destination directory that is RLS Wireshark Dissector. You need to use sudo because we are writing in a system directory where we don't have permission to write. So that's it. Your RLS Wireshark Dissector plugin should be installed now. And let me just open Wireshark. All right. So let's do one thing. All right, so let me open Wireshark with root privileges. Okay, that's it. So let us try to connect the UE as well. And I will just show you the UE configuration. And what we'll do, we'll first try to match it with the G Node B configuration that we have. All right, so we have the configuration of UE1 here. Uh, MCC999, MNC is 70, which, is, which matches the G Node B configuration. MC is uh, 997, I think this should match the configured SIM here. Oh, I don't have a subscriber yet, let me just configure it. Uh, this is the same. It's 465B, all right, and OPC AMF is 8000. OP is A E8 ED ending with CA, and that's all okay. SST is one, so if we go to the default slice, SST is one configured. And SSAI is 1 and default and SSAI is 1 with SD1. So that's all okay. I don't think so we need anything else. Let me just, there's my, it's safe. Okay, so this sim is configured. Let's go back. Now, keep in mind, this is important. The GNode B search list. For the G Node B1, the link IP, the simulation IP for the air interface is 101. So we need to update this one to 101. Now, when we are, when I'm going to spin up more G Node Bs, then you will see I can add two G Node Bs and it will try to, you know, connect to either of it, depending upon how the algorithm chooses it. So I think that's it. We don't need anything else. And we'll close it. And let me open my shark here. And I think we'll keep it on top. Build an R 
ue hyphen c ue one dot yaml. So we have some RRC connection, and you can see the connection here. First, we have the MIB that is the master information block. Then SIB one, which which uh, provides the cell details. Then we have the RRC setup request, RRC setup response, setup complete, information transfer. This is the authentication request, and then there is the authentication failure. So there is a sync failure. Then there is the authentication request, and then there is the authentication response. This means the authentication should be successful. That's why we have a security mode command. And then we have the uplink information transfer and downlink information transfer. So here you know the UE is disconnecting again. That's why we have the MIB and SIP one. So if we check the logs, it says UE switches to state normal service. That means UE is camped normally. It's sending registration complete. Initial registration is successful. Sending PDU session establishment request and UAC access attempt is allowed for identity zero. This means it is able to access the UAC. Configuration update command received. That is the default bearer that it should be uh, configuring. And then you have the PDU session establishment accept received. But then tunnel interface could not be set up. Permission denied. Please run UE with sudo. So it has a permission denied. Let me just clear it and I will just run this with sudo and let's see if we have some successful connection now. All right, so this tele interface is up and you can see we have the connection set up. All right, so I think that's it uh, in this video. In the next video, I will show you how you can see the traffic inside these connections and how you can actually simulate rest of the interfaces with open 5Js and UE Ransom. So in this video, we had set up the control plane from UE towards AMF, as well as we also set up a user plane using the tunnel interface. But in the next video, we are going to see how we can actually simulate sending the traffic from either of the interface, either from the UPF side or from the UE side, so that we can see if there is traffic going on on this simulated interface. I hope you enjoyed this video. And in case you have any queries, please ask me in the comment box. Thanks for watching this and have a great day.